Alan Wake is a video game developed by Remedy Entertainment, released in 2010. In its pacing and structure, Alan Wake is similar to a thriller television series with episodes that contain plot twists and cliffhangers, drawing inspiration from other sources like TV classic Twin Peaks and the novels of Stephen King. Alan Wake walks the fine line between psychological and supernatural. The protagonist of the story, Alan Wake, is a best-selling crime fiction writer suffering from writer's block. We are introduced to the character Alan Wick in a nightmare featured in his own writing, which the dark forces from his story are trying to kill him. Waking up from his nightmare, Alan realized he and his wife Alice were traveling to a small mountain town of Bright Falls near the Pacific West for a short vacation. He couldn't write a single word for two years since he published the crime series which made him famous. So he's hoping a vacation away from the publishing world will bring his inspiration back. Upon arrival in Bright Falls, Alan walked into a diner to retrieve the keys and map to their rented cabin. But he encountered a mysterious woman in a black funeral dress who tells him the cabin's landlord, Carl Stucky, was sick and she was entrusted to give Alan the keys. The sinister woman directed Alan and Alice to a cabin on an island in the middle of Cauldron Lake, a volcanic crater lake. Eventually, they arrived at the cabin. As they unpacked, Alice revealed her surprise to Alan. She brought Alan's typewriter and hoped he could write more on his vacation. She also confessed to Alan that she planned the trip to help break his writer's block by arranging for him to see a Bright Force psychologist, Dr. Emil Hartman, who was renowned for his method of treating creative artists. Alan got really stressed and angry because he wanted this vacation to be a break from that pressure. He storms out of the cabin. From here, things start to go wrong and events took a dark turn into supernatural phenomena. Alice cried for help, and as Alan rushes back to the cabin, it was too late. Alice was dragged into the lake's water by a dark force. Throughout the game, Alan was forced to fight his way through the possessed town folk as he tries to uncover the mystery behind Alice's disappearance while experiencing the events of a story he didn't even remember writing coming to life. Without diving too deep into the story, which could be quite confusing, I'm going to focus on the four lessons inspired by Alan Wick that we could apply onto our lives to reignite our creativity and memory mental health. Before we start, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more video game lessons for everyday life. Lesson number one, you are the author of your own story. Little by little, without realizing it, I'd come to believe that the story in the manuscript was coming true. As Alan Wake's journey of nightmare progresses, he gradually begins to learn the truth about Cauldron Lake, an entity known as the Dark Presence, taking the form of a mysterious old woman, Barbara Jagger, is trapped within the lake. The woman revealed to Alan that Cauldron Lake possessed the power to turn works of art into reality, and promising Alan by writing departure, he would be able to write Alice back. But soon, Alan realized the Dark Presence wasn't using his story to bring Alice back. Disguised as his editor, it was twisting his story to free itself, to grant itself more power so it could expand its control over the townspeople and create forces that pursued Alan, and is holding Alice within the lake in order to threaten him. The Dark Presence had done this once before with the poet Sane, but Sane was able to resist its will and used his writing to cause the volcanic eruption that sank the island, stranding himself and the Dark Presence within the lake. Having realized the Dark Presence's manipulative intention, Alan changed changed the story of departure and wrote an escape into his story, consciously writing himself in as a protagonist and having Sane in a diving suit that radiates light to arrive at the cabin to help Alan escape. In our real life, we don't need some supernatural power to turn our story into reality because each of us possess the power to write our own story. Our ability to create and shape our script of life is the ultimate creative freedom. Life is also a game. We are not only the main protagonist of this game, but also its director, actor and script writer. Take a moment to consider what role you are currently playing. Are you living up to your own script of life? Are you living the life as you are destined to live? Is your story inspiring or tragic? Are you playing as the hero on a mission? What legacy do you want to leave behind? Even if you are not consciously writing your story, it is still your decision to be carried by the will of others who are stronger with more clarity. If you enjoy the role you are playing right now, keep following your script and expressing your talents. If you don't, don't let yourself sink any deeper. Start changing your story script right now and live out your best version of your character. I am not the author of your story. The game begins with Stephen King's quote romantically expressing fear as poetry. Stephen King once wrote that nightmares exist outside of logic and there's little fun to be had in explanations. 
They're antithetical to the poetry of fear. Most people in life also have a fear of change. They explain and justify every reason not to take risk because it seems logical. They're constantly seeking for security and safety because we humans are creatures of habit. However, security is an illusion. We become prisoners of our past self by doing things the way we've always done before and rigidly holding on to that false sense of certainty and predictability. It leads to zero progress in life only by plunging into the deep cauldron lake of the unknown and embrace the uncertainty we can discover the fast freedom to create and manifest our desires into reality. Since any creative endeavor is by nature uncertain, we must let go of our needs for comfort and security if we want our lives to be a creative adventure and live like the poetic Alan Wake. No one is safe in a good horror story, certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. I quote an inspiring passage by philosopher Alan Wake. Sorry, I mean Alan Watts. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream and that you could, for example, have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time or any length of time you wanted to have. And you would naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure you could conceive. And after several nights of 75 years of total pleasure each, say, well, that was pretty great. But now let's, um, let's have a surprise. Let's have a dream which isn't under control. Well, something is going to happen to me that I don't know what it's going to be. And uh, you, you would dig that and come out of that and say, wow, that was a, a close shave, wasn't it? And then you would get more and more adventurous and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. You would dream the dream of living the life that you are actually living today. Lesson number two. Use your burning desire to shine your light into darkness. A writer is a light that reveals the world of his story from darkness, shapes it from nothingness. The way a sculptor carves a statue from a block of granite. If I stop, the world I'm making dies. Darkness will reclaim it. Alan Wick is a writer. Because of his profession, he has an innate obsession with words, and his writing style contains rich metaphors, most notably the battle between light and darkness, and other motifs contrasted with polar opposites. You've read me. Oh, sure. You're a pretty good writer. A little heavy on the metaphors, maybe. Nobody's ever said that before. As a child, he was deeply afraid of the dark, to the point that his mother gave him an old light switch she called the clicker. She told Alan that the light switch had the power to banish the darkness and protect him from the monsters that lurk in the dark, and that it was also a gift from Alan's father, who he had never met. From that moment, Alan was no longer afraid of the dark and always kept the clicker by his side. As a teenager, Alan started to get interested in writing, and Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to Alan. He thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books, igniting a burning desire within his heart to become a writer. In his 20s, with help of his childhood best friend, Barry Wheeler, Alan got an opportunity to write several episodes for the TV show Night Springs, and it ultimately kicked off his writing career. Alan's name became internationally known after he wrote the first installment in the Alex Casey crime thriller novel series. Barry became Alan's literary agent and helped to facilitate his success. Alan met and fell in love with a talented photographer, Alice, and married her. After publishing the last book of the Alex Casey series, The Sudden Stop, Alan suffered from a sudden and devastating writer's block, unable to write a word for two years. Worrying for her husband, Alice read a book by art therapist Dr. Emil Hartman entitled The Creator's Dilemma. Hoping to help Alan recover from his writer's block, Alice took him on a vacation to the rural town of Bright Falls before the nightmare orchestrated by the dark presence took Alice captive under Cauldron Lake. Upon the kidnapping of Alice, Alan's one and only burning desire was to find out what had happened in order to bring Alice back. His desperate search for Alice was relentless, and he was willing to do whatever it takes to make his path straight, even pushing himself on the edge of insanity by sitting down for a whole week at the typewriter while being possessed by Barbara Jagger in the cabin. Writing the departure without stop, Alan was willing to pay any price for Alice. He refused to succumb to the darkness in the face of confusion and chaos, despite not being able to think straight or distinguish between nightmare from reality. He won't stop seeking and writing and shining his light of creative talent into the darkness of oblivion. It's a long, hard journey into the dark. Alice's life is at stake, but I can't think about that or I'll lose it. The dread lingers at the edge of perception. I'll push on. Anything is possible here. I'll write the story. I'll save her. 
in our own waking dream of life. We all have different vocations, and not everyone possesses the gift of writing like Alan Wake. However, Alan Wake's light and dark metaphor still applies to us perfectly. Because no matter what our hearts yearn to give, we all have a burning desire, a unique gift, an inner voice that calls upon us to bring that light forward and shine onto the world. Usually, our light was bright when we were young. Like Alan, already admired Stephen King and clearly aspired to become a writer as a teenage boy. But as we got older, the light is dimmed by our daily mundane obligations, insecurities about money, and distracted by others' opinion about who we are or what we should be doing. Stop following others, but your own heart's burning desire. In Alan Wake's story, Barbara Jagger, Doctor Hartman, all seemingly try to assist Alan with his creative work. But the truth is that they all had selfish interest and try to take advantage of Alan's talent to their own benefits. When you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best, don't you think? Only Alice was Alan's benevolent angel, artistic muse, true love, who sparks a burning desire to overcome his creative frustrations, his fear of success, of losing his touch, and not being able to surpass the legacy of his previous works. Even we are not aspiring to be a writer like Alan Wake. Our dreams and callings are equally important to the world. So trust that inner voice, and don't let the light within you wither and die into the darkness of nothingness, along with your death. No one will believe in you if you don't first believe in yourself. If you give up chasing your dream, the world becomes a slightly darker place. God had planted that seed in you for a reason, so never underestimate your light and creative idea, no matter how crazy it might sound to others. Being crazy is a requirement, sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. I quote. Ralph Waldo Emerson. A man should learn to detect and watch that gleam of light, which flashes across his mind from within, more than the luster of the firmament of bards and sages. Yet he dismisses without notice his thought, because it is his. In every work of a genius, we recognize our own rejected thoughts. They come back to us with a certain alienated majesty. Lesson number three: heighten awareness and connect with the higher self. For me, the supernatural had always been nothing but a metaphor for the human psyche, a tool to use in writing fiction. Alan Wake is a rare video game that is filled with metaphors and mysterious dreamlike images that speaks directly to our subconscious mind. It also shows the basic principle of the opposites: that everything in our psyche naturally has an opposite aspect. There's light and there's darkness, cause and effect. There's guilt and there's atonement. But the scales always need to balance. Everything has a price. By reconnecting with the opposites, we can discover secrets of our nature and unexplore parts of ourselves. In Alan Wake, darkness obscures and distorts the true nature of things, and light penetrates darkness to reveal the truth beneath. The combat mechanic of Alan Wake makes the game unique and stands out from other survival horror shooters. The need to shine a light on the enemy, called the Taken, to make them first vulnerable, burning their veil of darkness away before they can be shot and eliminated, makes the experience beautifully metaphorical to our psyche. Alan Wake's main motif of light and darkness isn't just the cliched representation of good and evil. But it makes more sense to think of it as symbols of conscious awareness and unconscious ignorance. This also relates to how our minds operate. The first step towards overcoming our own demons is to shine a light on it, identifying and understanding its true nature, so we can rise up and fight against those dark and negative thoughts. The gun held in Alan's hands is not simply a gun; it represents his true weapon of the supreme power of words as an art form. An ability to think not just logically but intuitively. This is not a gun. It is a tool in a logical process of elimination. Metaphors in Alan Wake, stacked over one another, teaches us what it's like to be human and help us better understand our own psychology. Alan Wake himself is a deeply sophisticated and troubled artist. He has a complex personality with high neurotic traits. His emotion is like a roller coaster, whirling from depressive, obsessive, cynical, oversensitive, resentful, and aggressive. He also has a history of substance abuse, fighting a lifelong struggle against alcoholism. Alan Wake is a highly talented with an extremely imaginative mind. But unfortunately, he doesn't seem to have a lot of self-control and awareness. According to his BFF Barry, he has the impulse control of a pit bull on crack. 
He's so lucky to have such a supportive and accepting wife, Alice, who tolerates and even encourages him in his creative work, knowing full well about his negative shit and self-sabotaging behaviors. She adds the much-needed stability to his life. His ability to keep writing and inspiration to continue the creative process comes from her gentle, patient, unconditional love and support. I love you, even if you are a liar. Thanks for this. The tragedy of Alice being taken by the Dark Presence marked the beginning of his journey towards his true self. Because of his failure to control his anger and emotions, he stormed out of the cabin and failed to save Alice from being taken. Alan felt a deep sense of guilt and regret. Self-control takes self-awareness. Throughout his journey of atonement, he had to constantly face his own shadow, nightmares and started to see that the darkness of his enemies are often projected from himself. Upon meeting the Anderson brothers, former rock musicians who had past experience with the supernatural events in Bright Force, they instructed him the location of their farm which contains the clue to stopping the dark presence. That night, under the influence of Anderson's moonshine infused with water from Cauldron Lake, Alan saw a vision of what happened during the missing week in a state of out-of-body witness. It was a crazy drunken dream, and yet it was more than that. It was the truth, a suppressed memory unearthed by the Anderson's moonshine. I was there, an out-of-body observer. This experience heightened Alan's level of awareness and he was able to write the poet sane into his story. Even with the cobweb she put in my head, some part of me had been aware enough to write my escape into the story, to bring a light into the cabin to release me before I could finish. He realized he was constantly fighting himself. There's a point when he wasn't sure about his sanity anymore and whether or not he was schizophrenic. The Dark Presence is not responsible for this. You are making this happen. You're trapped in your own nightmares. You are fighting yourself. The hero is often reborn when he's at the darkest point. Legendary poet Zane appeared as his higher guidance, perhaps representing his higher self. You must wake yourself up, but first you have to reach yourself. With Zane's guidance, Alan was able to focus once again, persevere and push past the resistance, doubt and hallucinations conjured up by his evil and demonic lower self. It's to be expected. Your struggle to reclaim yourself, the landscape reflects that strain, but each step takes you closer. If you persevere, you can attain the lucidity that fends off the darkness. In the final DLC episode, The Whiter, Sane explains to Alan, You represent the part of Alan Wake that is capable of rational thought and planning, which is why I'm talking to you. If that part can regain control, then you have a chance of making it. But a part of you wants to give in. There's comfort in the oblivion of dreams. You represent the part that isn't ready to quit and die. It is Sane's hope for the Sane Alan to regain control before his insane side gives in to the darkness. Good. You are aware. The part of you bent on self-destruction is not. He must reach the cabin at Cauldron Lake to either find himself or be lost to the Dark Presence permanently. He provided Alan a manuscript page, giving Alan the ability to clear a path to the lighthouse. Using words as signal, Alan begins to make his way from the mountain overlook to the lighthouse. The lighthouse could be seen as a symbol of Alan's individual consciousness, as Jung wrote. As far as we can discern, the sole purpose of human existence is to kindle a light in the darkness of mere being. After some serious battle with his own delusions, Alan enters the cabin and goes upstairs to find his weak, lower self lying on the floor speaking random nonsense. As the rational Alan places his hand on the other Alan's shoulder, the two merge, making him whole again, possessing a new sense of clarity as his shadow self is now integrated with his higher self. Lesson number 4 Tap into the art of creativity and appreciate the sublime human experience. After the completion of any difficult undertaking, there are mixed emotions. Accomplishment and relief. Sadness, depression. For a while, everything was about the work. Like an illness, it consumed you. Changed you. You locked yourself away from the world to do it, and now you need to recover. Learn to live without it. Find a way to crack open the door and let the light back in. Alan Wick is an adventure towards the human psyche and an exploration of art and creativity. It touched on complex themes of mental health, subconscious mind, psychoanalysis, human nature, serendipity, poetry, muses, and even the supernatural and unseen forces. 
Most importantly, Alan Wake's core message is about art and the creative process. It shows that the creative process is often sparked by inspiration from others. For example, the foggy, mysterious atmosphere of Bright Force was heavily inspired by the Twilight Zone, Twin Peaks, and Stephen King's works. Alan Wake himself was not shy to use inspiration from other mediums to create something of his own. Zane believes it's a mirror to the gaping void of darkness above, where some Lovecraftian presence lurks. I crawl back upstairs. I'll borrow these things for my story. They ring true. They fit. Art could be used as a tool for the acquisition of truth. It is a creative way of exploring the human nature. Through art, we reach new heights of self-knowledge. The rich metaphors in Alan Wick reflect the unconscious and unexplored parts of our minds back to us. The fairy plot of the game, a fictional story becoming reality, and on a meta level, the life lessons in this video are also inspired by Alan Wick. This is a testament on how art can use fictional characters, video game stories to shape the world culture and express truths to help us better appreciate the sublime human experience and inspire us to live a better life. The best creative work transcends time, lives on, touches and connects with the future audience. After 11 years since Alan Wake's original release, there's still profound wisdom to be found in the misty town of Bright Force. It is definitely worth your time to play Alan Wake Remastered again. Let me share with you my story of how Alan Wick helped me overcome my own creative block. Alan is an artist going through a writer's block. Because of the complexity of Alan Wick, I also experienced my share of frustration and creative block while researching and writing this video script. I'm lucky enough to have my amazing wife's unconditional support. I'm a happily married man. My wife is my muse. So in Alan's words, I had a feeling of deja vu. I had a disturbing feeling of deja vu. I actually wrote the first point of this video around last Christmas. But after the holidays, I lost momentum and experienced a deep sense of resistance and negativity that prevented me from keep writing the script. I heard a negative voice within me saying things like, Why bother obsessing about a long forgotten video game? Maybe I should just go play some popular games. It takes so much time to make a video. It's better off to make more money and put my time on getting a higher paying job instead. I've lost passion and what's the point if I can't do better than the last videos? At the time, I actually listened to that voice and believed maybe the best way forward for me is to settle for a stable job and spend all my time off work playing video games. But soon I've fallen back into my old addictions, depression, anxiety, sudden attacks of bad moods. I felt resentful and hated everything. I was my lower self again. I realized I have become the ungrateful, unhappy and vindictive version of Alan Wick. When he stopped writing, the mad version of himself that he saw on television, he's just not himself when he's not writing. Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. The more resistance we feel, the more important the work means to us. Now I understood why Dr. Hartman advertised his services as engagement therapy to artists, even if it was a scam. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. The best therapy to cure writer's block or artist moods is to just sit down and do the work to enter the state of creative flow, heightened awareness and engagement. You wanted to go with the flow. Stop thinking and just let go. To have faith that the muse will visit from heaven. Through this state, Alan Wick could concentrate for hours straight, lose track of time for seven days and channel his obsessive thoughts, dark energies and over-imaginative mind into words that make a good horror story. I also found that Saint's advice to Alan was tremendously helpful to me. Your previous work can help you. I still have some pages of your manuscript left. Words like that have power here. I literally took his advice, went back to my old videos, and compiled some of the most heartfelt comments from some of you guys, and made it my desktop wallpaper. Your general support really strengthened my resolve and determination to keep pushing forward. Like the creator of Alan Wick, I'm also curious in other realms and unseen forces that control us. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. As I mentioned in my Dante's Inferno video, to move up in life, we must first go down to hell and face our own demons and defeat the devil of resistance. The creative process is no different to a warrior's adventure. 
The purpose is not to satisfy our ego, but to surpass our old self and overcome our weakness. At the same time, sharing inspiration with others in need. There are so many aspects of Alan's personality that I identify with personally, and I believe it is my destiny to share my muse of video game wisdom with you. I think I might be a bit crazy too. He works on video games. Ooh, yeah. It's ah. trash, yeah. of course, yeah. but it does I'll involve some small creative effort, which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. No kidding. Just one more advice for those of you who wish to start any creative endeavor. Think of yourself as an explorer like Alan Wake. You cannot gain anything new if you're unwilling to leave the comforting shore of bright force and enter the darkness of the deepest forest. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this video helpful and learned some insights from Alan Wick about creativity and mental health. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Your support is important and will help my content reach more people. See you in the next video.